In this video, I will show you how to use an educational website called Blookit.com to create educational games for your students to play. Let's get started. Here I am on Blookit.com. I can sign up in one of two ways. I'll just sign up with Google. I'll verify that I'm at least 13 years old. And the good news is, only the teacher really needs to sign up for Blookit. Students don't need to do this. I'll go ahead and click Sign Up. I specify that I'm a teacher, not a student, and I get a welcome tour. You can look at this yourself if you'd like, but I'm going to close out of that. And now I'm on my Blookit homepage. You'll notice that it says My Sets. Now what sets are, they're basically sets of questions that all have a common theme that can be played in various games on Blookit.com. You can see there are two main ways to get Blookit sets for your collection. You can either create a set from scratch or you can discover pre-made sets other people have created and you can make them your own. First, let's look at how to create a set from scratch. I'll click that button, and I start by giving this set a title. Let's say that my game is for a Spanish class, and we're studying the Spanish family vocabulary. I'll put that in as the title of my game. Next, I can describe this question set. I can add a cover image for my question set. You can see there's three different ways to do that. I'm just going to click Image Gallery and do a search for Family. And I'll just pick an image to become the cover for this question set. Next, I need to decide the privacy settings. Is this question set going to be private, only for me and my students to play, or public? I'm going to go ahead and make it public. Next, I need to decide a creation method. Do I want to create these questions completely from scratch? And yes, that's what I want to do. But notice that there are two other options that are fantastic. One is Quizlet Import. If you select that, it'll give you instructions and help you export a flashcard set from Quizlet.com and import that right into Blookit. If you're not familiar with Quizlet, please watch one of my videos on Quizlet and you'll learn about an amazing tool for teachers and students. You can also do a spreadsheet import that's kind of similar, but let's look at manual. Now that I've selected that, I'll click create your set and I'll click add question. I'll click to add the question text. So how do you say mother in Spanish? There's my question. And then I'll put in some answers. Some of these will be correct, some will be incorrect. I just need to mark the correct answer by putting a check mark in the box next to it. Now take a look at some of the nice features we have on this creation screen that I'm using. If I'd like, I could include an image. So I could click there. And again, I have several different methods I can use to get an image into this question. So I could just click on an image, and now my question has text and it has a photo. What if my question is a math equation or a math problem? Take a look at this. I can click to easily insert math symbols into the question. Click insert, and there it is. Now notice that that took the place of the photo. Here in this spot, if you want to have something here, it's either going to be an image or a math symbol. You can click the audio button. But notice that this is a premium feature. You would have to upgrade and pay to get that feature. In addition to adding photos and math symbols and equations onto your question, notice that you can also add math symbols onto the answers, the possible answers. You can't add photos though unless you upgrade. If you want, you can set the time limit for this question. So if it's a particularly hard question or if they're going to have to solve an equation or things like that, you might want to increase the time limit that they have. You can choose to have the answers come in in random order. If you want that, just leave this box checked. Otherwise, you can uncheck it. I'm happy with this, so I'll go ahead and click Save. There's question number one for my Blook It game. So I could just keep adding questions like I just did, or notice that I still do have that option to import from Quizlet. I could search a study set in Quizlet, and then I could click here to go to the next step, and it walks me through how to import Quizlet flashcard sets into my Blookit question set. Same with spreadsheet import, I can still do that. But notice this, there's an option for question bank. I can search for a set that someone else has made. Here's one that looks promising. And I can click on it and I can just say, okay, that looks like a good question. I'm going to add it to my question set. What about this one? Yeah, I'll add that as well. And that one and that one. So pretty quickly, I can end up with a nice set of questions. And I can do all of the work myself if I want to by clicking add question. Or I could import questions that other people have created in one of these three ways here. Once other people's questions are added to my question set, I can click here to edit. So for example, I could add an image, click save. 
I can also reorder the questions if I want to. So I would just continue this process of either adding questions manually or importing in one of these three ways until I'm done and I'm ready for this question set to be played by my students. When I am ready, I'll just click Save Set. And now on my Blook It homepage, here's La Familia in my sets. I mentioned that you can find other people's sets and copy them completely. Here at the top, if you click on Discover, you can search for a question set. Here's one that's been played quite a lot, so I can click on that to get a sense of it. And if I really like it, I can click this star to favorite it, and I can use that with my students. If I wanted to add it in its entirety and then edit it and do all of that and make it my own, really, I would have to upgrade to a paid account and then click duplicate. But honestly, you don't really need to do that because I clicked this star. When I go to my dashboard, it doesn't show up here in my sets, but if I click on favorites, there it is. Okay, let's say I'm ready to play this La Familia game with my students. There's a couple of different ways I can play this game with them. Let's look at host. If I click on host, it opens up a window and it says select a game mode. And look at all of these games that we have access to. There is a classic game that will remind you a little bit of Kahoot if you've used that. But there's a variety here of other types of games that you can use. There's a racing game, there's Tower of Doom, there's Tower Defense, which is a kind of strategy game. There's The Factory, Crazy Kingdom, Fishing Frenzy. There's just a whole bunch of different options. I'm going to go with this Gold Quest. Whenever you choose a game mode in Blook It, it gives you a good description of what the game will be like. It'll describe the game itself, and then it tells you how you win. It's going to take some skill, some speed at knowing the answers, but also some luck. With my free Blook It account, I'll be able to play this with up to 60 students at the same time, and it really does work best with at least three players. So I'll go ahead and host the game, and here I can choose how to determine when the game is over. Is it time-based, or do the students need to earn a certain amount of gold in order for the game to end? I'm gonna go with time, and I'll set that to one minute. You can see there's some other settings that you can adjust if you want, and then just click host now. Now I'm gonna turn down the volume a little bit on this beautiful music that's playing in the background. Similar to Kahoot, we have a link for the students to go to, blookit.com forward slash play, and then a code for them to enter in. Let's look at what that's like for a student. Here we have the screen of a student that's on an iPad, and the student will just tap join a game, and it loads up a screen on which the student puts in the game ID. Once the students put the code in, they can just tap this arrow, and now the student gets to pick a nickname. So now this is what the student sees, waiting for the host. While the students are waiting, they can select an avatar that they want to use for themselves. And then back on the teacher screen, you'll notice now we have a student named Unicorn Heart that's in the game, ready to play. Now that we have a couple of students in the game, I'm going to go ahead and click Start, and the game begins. You can see the instructions on the teacher screen. And now this is what's on the teacher computer which is probably projected onto a screen in the classroom. Meanwhile, this is what the students are seeing. Each student on their own device is getting questions. If they put in the wrong answer, it tells them that it's incorrect, and it shows what the correct answer is. The student can tap or click anywhere to proceed to the next question. When a student gets the question right, it tells them, yes, you got it right, and then they can tap to move on. Now that the student got a question right, the student can pick one of these three chests. And depending on the chest and what's inside, there's different things that happen. Now, because I selected one minute, that wasn't long enough and the game expired. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new game. But let's see what happens when the student gets the question right and they choose a chest. In this case, randomly, I had to lose 25% of my gold, but I didn't have any to begin with. Let's say I get another one right. I'll pick another chest. Oh, lose 50%. So there's definitely some randomness involved here. In this case, I got double the gold. Okay, so this time I found the gold and I get 20 gold added to my total. So this is just one of the games that can be played using Blook It. When you're done, you get a final standings with a celebration of the top two or three players. And then as the teacher, if you want, you can click View Report, and it gives you a breakdown of the number of questions that were answered correctly versus incorrectly. You do get a leaderboard, but that's about all of the formative assessment information that's gathered. That's why I consider Blook It to be an educational games tool and not so much a formative assessment tool.
If you do upgrade, you get detailed game reports. At that point, it would be a little bit more of a formative assessment tool. You can also play this game as a solo experience. So I could set this up on a laptop or a desktop computer or a Chromebook, and then I could have a student come over and play any of these games just by himself or herself. So I could click Cafe, New Game, and then there's save slots that the students can use, and then they can just start playing the game. So that's an option as well, to have students experience these games just one student at a time, not as a whole class. If you put your mouse here on the gear symbol, notice that you can also get a link that you can share with someone, and I'm gonna log out and then go to that link just so that you can see what it would be like for the students. If they click that link, it's gonna take them to a login screen for Blookit, and then they would need to, at that point, log in. So you'll have to decide if that's an option that you wanna use with the links. If you do ask your students to sign up for a free Blookit account, you can assign your study sets as homework. And then as the teacher, you can go and look at the homework and how the students have done. So I hope you can see the great potential in using Blookit with your students to help them practice the content that you're teaching and that they need to learn. And remember that there are several other games besides the one or two that I highlighted, and your same question set can be used multiple times with different games. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider clicking the thanks button below the video, or you could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll find information about those options in the description below the video.